Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG Games. I'm going to be continuing my tutorial series on the Blender modifiers. Now, in this tutorial, we're actually concluding a section of the tutorials. For the first, um, the first section was the generator, and that all had to do with like our mesh and how they acted. And so we're actually concluding with the wireframe. Now, I believe this is tutorial number 10, and so we have done 10 from the generate. And since there's not as many from the deform, I'm just going to try to do as many as I can rather than do 10 for each, which was my original idea. But you get the idea. So in this tutorial, we're covering the wireframe modifier, which is actually a really cool modifier, and I really enjoy using this in animations and whatnot. Oh, I am stupid. Um, and so, yeah, but before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe. Um, check out our website um, up here. Um, thank you to Dog Breath Seven for pointing out that I've actually misspelled website wrong in the past two tutorials. So, thank you to that. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really means a lot to us. And then, if you subscribe, you don't miss out on any of the videos. And then, don't forget to follow us on social media: Twitter, Instagram, and Google Plus. Twitter is at JG and Games. Google Plus just search JG and Games, and Instagram is at under, JGN underscore games. So don't forget to do that. Um, there's going to be annotations on those, so you can click on those if you're using the web version, but for those using the mobile version, I'm just going to put that out there. So let's jump into the um, wireframe modifier. Now, I prefer not to use the cube just because you can't really appreciate it, but we're going to start off with the cube. I'm going to kind of move down and I'm going to get an add modifier wireframe. Now you can already go ahead and see what this does. But if I actually hit Z, you'll see, and if I deselect the object, you'll see it is actually its own mesh. It is taking the edges and turn those into. And we can actually make these thicker. So this is an easier way, I guess, to do the Boolean. So, but it's just a much simpler way. Uh, you can do expansion and stuff like that. I'm going to expand this. So you have thickness, which obviously controls the thickness of your borders. I'm going to keep this at 0.15. Um, even thickness, you can do that, or you can off check it, um, uncheck it. Then you can say relative thickness, um, which kind of overlaps, but you get the idea. It kind of just makes corners and stuff. Um, I prefer even thickness. Boundary, uh, don't really see much to do there. Um, factor doesn't matter unless you have a vertex group. So if you know what vertex groups, great, but we're not going to be using those. Crease edges, you can actually crease how the edges work. I guess that's for if you have um, like higher stuff. Um, and then there's material offset, which just defines the generator faces um, thing. Yeah. And you can actually, if you, there's something people don't know about the wireframe. If you uncheck replace original, it keeps the cube there. And actually, you can go in and edit the vertices right there. And if I tab again, it will edit in real time. So this is a cool way to get that bevel effect if you want to. Um, you can use offset to make it less of a bevel effect, but unless you're doing an inner bevel, unless you want the inner bevel effect, then that's this is probably not what you want. So that's really the wireframe modifier, and this doesn't only work on cubes. I can then actually move this over, and I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to add the Blender mascot, the monkey. I'm going to turn it 180 degrees. Um, is my keycaster on? Yes, it is. And I'm going to add the wireframe to this, and you'll see it has actually taken any everything. And made it wireframe. So this is a cool thing. This actually does work with 3D printing, which is really cool. And if you turn off replace original, I mean that just looks cool. If you're going for like a diamond effect, that's a great way to get stuff. Also, if you're going for an outline, because what you could do is you could get the edges to generate on material one. So therefore, the first material would be, uh, I guess, blue, and then the second material. I forgot how this works. There's some way you can play around with the material. There it is. So if you set the normal material is um, one, but if you change it to two, you can actually get these edges to change colors. And if I shift Z to go 
you can see that that gives a pretty good effect right there. So that's a cool way you can use it. And this is not destructive either. You can go back into the materials and you could say, huh, maybe I want tune shading. Uh, maybe I want Fresno. Oops, Fresno. And you can bump up the Fresno and stuff like that. Um, I'm doing this with the my least favorite engine, the Blender Render. So if I was doing this with cycles though, I could have two materials, um, node edited and have like copper edges, for example, and then have like a stony material for the monkey. So that's pretty much all the wireframe modifier is. I mean, it's just, it basically just takes your mesh and adds new meshes to it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to watch our last tutorial on the triangulate modifier. There will be an annotation down there. Don't forget to check that out. Also, don't forget to subscribe, check out our website, and also follow us on social media. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.